Hey, hey, Doug Greathouse here, host of the Entrepreneur Journey Podcast. And before we get into another amazing interview with an incredible entrepreneur, I wanted to invite you to the Trailblazer Mastermind community. What that community community is, is a community of amazing entrepreneurs, just like the ones that you've seen me interview on the podcast, the six and seven figure entrepreneurs. You'll get to learn from and engage with those entrepreneurs, uh, and as well as many other entrepreneurs. We have a weekly networking event in there where you will meet the people that are seeking you and that you are seeking, meaning your next podcast guest, or if you want to be on a podcast, your clients, joint ventures, affiliates, we make those connections happen inside the Trailblazer Mastermind at the Entrepreneur Connect. We also have a monthly mastermind called the Trailblazer Mastermind. It's a feet to the fire style mastermind, meaning the goals that you have set for yourself and your business, you have a mastermind that is going to hold you accountable and help you hit those goals. Uh, you also learn what is ha- what is working inside of other coaching businesses to help them grow. So that's not all. We also have the sales site all-in-one marketing platform, which you will get access to as a member of the Trailblazer Mastermind. Uh, it has everything that you need to grow your coaching business from funnels, you can host your website there, uh, social planner, email automation, SMS automation, sales pipeline, everything, literally everything you could possibly need to market and grow your coaching business is inside that uh, platform. So you'll get access to that. There's also contests and giveaways. There's the expert training library uh, where we have experts. If you want to launch and grow your next, po- grow your podcast, if you want to s- write a bestseller, those experts are going to be inside of the mastermind and you can learn from them and grow. Um, and in addition, not last but not certainly not least, there's the Raise Your Revenue course, the course by uh, me and my team that we put together to help you hit your five-figure consistent months in your business and then grow from there. So this is a roadmap to get you to that first five-figure month, lay the proper foundation, and you can grow from there. So there, there's so much more. Go check it out. It's at mastermind.salesite.com. And All right. We are live on my Facebook profile today, and I am super, super happy to have Dave Whitley with me here today. Um, Dave is going to tell us his story. He's going to fill us in on his expertise. Um, but I like to kind of just start off with Dave telling us who he is and what he does. Um, but just keep that short, Dave, because we're going to go into your story and all your expertise okay. later. All right. Thanks for having me on. You're very welcome. Um, short version, I, uh, got interested in strength and, and, and all things related to strength when I was a kid, because I was picked on and bullied and identified strongly with the Hulk, saw Lou Ferrigno on television, started lifting weights. Um, fast forward several decades, I became a, um, um, strength professional, fitness professional, and then a performing strongman that led me down the path along with being entrepreneurial down the path of understanding how the mind works, because my, Um, strongman mentor grandmaster strongman dennis rogers told me um once that you have to remove all fear doubt and limitation because the mind controls the body and that was in reference to a particular feat and after that worked with a specific feat of strength i was like where else does this apply and it turns out that it's everywhere i started applying it to my business to my relationships started using it with my clients and um started working with the possibilities and probabilities of vividly imagining things the way we want them to be and then growing into that person. So that developed from performing and speaking about the mind into online coaching from a personal development standpoint. And then a few years ago, my son will be five in October this year, right before he was born, I started looking at what it meant to be a dad and realized that all of the values that I wanted to instill in him I wrote them down on a list and like who I wanted to be. And I looked at that list and I said, I'm falling short in a bunch of these. I need to get my stuff together in these areas so that I can be this role model that this kid needs and deserves. And from there, it has involved into uh, or evolved into what I'm currently doing now. My main focus is helping dads who know that they have these conflicting beliefs and um, um, negative things thoughts and patterns that they've inherited from their upbringing to break and replace those things so that they can be the the hero that their kids are looking for because kids are looking for a hero and it's up to the dad to step up and do that or else it's going to be twerker girl six nine on tiktok (laughs) right yeah 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 wow nice that's the short version (laughs) nice uh we're going to get into into all of that um the other thing i like to do at the beginning of these interviews is kind of some icebreakers kind of get to know you not just on on a business level but on a personal level um, sure. One of the things that I saw on your profile 
was a Van Halen t-shirt. So I know that you are into music. Uh, so uh, I want to ask you what your favorite bands are from different eras. So your favorite band from the 70s. My favorite band from the 70s, off the top of my head, I would go with Black Sabbath. Okay. And, also, and, but, but, but right next to that is the Ted Nugent band, too. I was a huge okay. Ted Nugent fan back in the day. I was, I, I was a guitar player, and um, that was, defined my teen years, and I was a professional guitar player for a little while in my 20s as well. So I'm, I'm into guitar music. Wow. Um, so the 80s. Van Halen, without a doubt. All right. Um, I'm going to ask you, ask you a follow-up question to the Van Halen question here in a second. Um, sure. The 90s. Um, tied for first, Pantera and Alice in Chains. Okay, okay, okay. And current favorite? Um, currently, there's there's not much current music that I'm really into, although <laughs> to, to reference, you know, I'm, I'm that guy. The music back in my day was, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm, I'm that guy. Although, having said that, Wolfgang Van Halen's band Mammoth WVH is amazing, phenomenal. It sounds nothing like the you know Van Halen that his father created, mm -hmm. but it's it's really good music. You can tell that the that Van Halen DNA is is alive and well in Wolfie's stuff. Wow, wow, nice, nice. Um, all right, so now following up on the Van Halen question, uh, best song from the Fan Sammy Hagar era and the best song from the David Lee Roth era. That is such a difficult thing to, to <laughs> answer because to say best song implies that it's better than the others. What I like to do is say, what is my current favorite mm. from both those eras? And for me, from the Hagar era, it's best of both worlds. That is probably my mm. favorite Hagar era song. Love that song. Um, and then my favorite from the Roth era currently is Little Guitars off the oh. the the Diver Down album, That um, which is, a, that's a deep cut. You know, that's that's a track a lot of people don't know about. But if you go and listen to it, it's like one of the most joyful, amazing songs ever done. And my son loves it. He runs around singing it all the time. So um, it's it's a co connection moment with that as well. Well, I'm a fan of the, of the Best of Both Worlds song for sure. And I honestly have never heard. You said it was Little Guitars? Little Guitars, yes. Wow. Wow. Nice. I think my one of my first exposures to rock music was my sister um, buying the 1984 album. Um and, and Hot for teachers best track on that one <laughs> yeah and, and rocking out all the time yes um so i want to know more also about what actually a professional strongman is so can you kind of go into what all that entails sure sure there there are two uh for lack of a better term classifications of strongman there's the competitive sport of strongman which is what most people are familiar with that's eddie hall brian shaw all of those guys, Hofthor Bjornsson, and they go do events and see who's the strongest. And, and, and it's an amazing sport. That is not what I do. Um, the performing strongman has its roots in vaudeville back in the um, late 1800s, early 1900s, when if people wanted entertainment, obviously there was no internet, no TV, and very few homes even had radios. So if they wanted entertainment, they would go out and see live theater. And vaudeville shows were traveling variety shows. And they had, you know, singers, dancers, comedians, um, animal acts, acrobats, all this sort of stuff. The strong men of the of the day performed on those stages. So the roots of what I do is in that. It's getting up on a stage. It's performing um, feats of strength for entertainment. Over the decades, it's evolved. And again, my my mentor Dennis Rogers was instrumental in this. Um, in helping me take it from a purely entertainment form where, hey, look, this guy's up here doing cool things that a lot of other people can't do, to taking these feats of strength and applying them into a, like a keynote presentation to uh, essentially be, a, I hate the term, but a motivational speaker to help inspire people to understand that the power of their mind. If, if I can do these feats of strength because it's rooted in the power of my mind and my imagination, then that job or that business or that relationship or that thing that you've been mulling around that you haven't moved on yet, you can do it too because because we all have the same potential in our mind. And as uh, Wallace Waddle said in um, The Science of Getting Rich, desire is um, power seeking expression. Yeah, unlimited. You, 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 we, we, have, we don't even tap into so much of the ability of the mind. It's, it's, it's crazy how, 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 um, how much we can do that we don't realize we can do. Yeah, that, that is awesome. Um, next question is, um, and this is because I, I am asking these questions of people that are coming on the podcast now because there is a book coming out that uh, someone else and I are forefronting. It's called Dear Younger Me. Um, so I'm asking the entrepreneurs that come on what they would tell their younger selves when they started their entrepreneur journey uh, if they could go back in time. So what would you tell your younger self? 
I came from the trade time for money mindset and got into entrepreneurial things with that background. And so for a long time, that was still pervasive in what I, what I did is like, um, how much of me can I give in exchange for money from you? And if I was to go back and talk to me, then knowing what I know now, I would say, forget about all that stuff. Your job as an entrepreneur is to solve problems. People have problems and your job is to show them how to solve them or solve those problems for them. The more important that problem is, the more valuable your solution is and the more they will pay you for it. And whatever that solution is, the more speed and certainty you bring into the solving of that problem, the more they will pay you and the better off you'll be and the more return business you'll have. Very, very, very true. I believe the same thing. (laughs) <laughs> and and secondary to that is the way you buy is the way that you sell. And so I came from the, the well, I can figure it all out by myself. And sure, <laughs> you can. Um, if you don't mind spending five years figuring something out that you could just pay someone and be done in three months knowing how to do it and execute it. So I, I figured out that the more I invest in myself, um, the better quality client I attract, even though the two things may not on surface have anything apparent with each other. Energetically, I believe that I'm moved into it. Um, and I'll get woo woo with you in a hurry here. I believe <laughs> I'm right. moved into, into a different vibrational state to where I am. I'm attracting people who are willing to invest large amounts in themselves um, because I have become a person who's willing to invest large amounts in himself. Yes. Um amplification right amplification reduction of time um mm-hmm. it all it all make it, it makes sense uh, it's it's just a fear thing right you got to get sure. you got to get through the the limiting mindset uh if you will right uh, absolutely you from doing those things so awesome awesome so now i really want to dive into you kind of alluded to your story a little bit i kind of want to go to like where you were before you started being an entrepreneur to where you are now so fill in all that gap tell us any twists and turns you want to talk about um, any pivotal moments, uh, anything like that? Sure. Um, I grew up without a lot of money. My dad was um, about half the time a professional musician and about half the time doing odd jobs to keep to keep the house running, you know, and um, very much came from a um, a blue collar mentality of work hard, put the time in and you'll get paid and then save all your money because someone is going to come and try to take it from you. Like that, those are like, those are core beliefs that were instilled in me as a kid. And I didn't know any better. Um, then once I got older and got tired of, of working for other people and realized that, that my active earning of income was actually providing someone else passive income. Like that was a a big switch hit for me there. Um, I, I'm like, okay, what do I, what am I really into? And what can, what is the stuff that I'm into that can help people? always had this love of strength and fitness and started pursuing that and uh, went through a process where I did that part-time and then I did it full-time and I owned a gym and I would travel and teach workshops, um, all of that sort of stuff. And um, there was a lot of grind to it. Um, Learned, learned about relationships and we learned about how, how interactions with other people is really what we're selling. You know, it's, we're selling hope. In, yeah. in, in, especially in the, the, you know, the physique transformation, weight loss world, you know, we're, we're selling hope and speed and certainty. Um, from all that, my fascination with strength, as I mentioned earlier, led me to becoming a reforming strong man. I saw Dennis Rogers. Um, I was actually doing a, a, a project, I don't know, 2005, 2006, where, uh, this predates podcasts where I would interview people and burn a CD and physically mail out a CD as a membership thing. Right. Wow. And so I would, I would, it was called like strength secrets revealed or something like that. And so I would interview people and every person that I interviewed, I would say, do you have anyone else that you would recommend to be a good fit for the show? And I interviewed my friend, um, the, the late great legend of strengths, um, Bud Jeffries. Hmm. And he said, man, if you haven't talked to Dennis Rogers, you got to talk to him. I didn't even know who he was. He connected me with Dennis. Dennis sent me a box of stuff, a bunch of DVDs and and stuff like that. So I could get to know what he was about. And one of the first DVDs that I popped in was Dennis taking a um, an eight inch crescent wrench 
and bending it into like an intense U shape. And I'm like, wait a minute, this doesn't make sense. Cause I knew strong, but I had like that. It just didn't compute, uh, especially since he was like five, eight and 160 pounds at the time. Wow. Um, and so part of the, the conversation I had with Dennis initially was he's like, if there's any of the stuff that you want to learn, just let me know. I'm happy to, to talk to you about it. So I became a student of his, went to what's called old time strongman university. <laughs> um, fast forward several years. It was my, um, full-time gig from about two, six, the 2016 up until, uh, the pandemic really. And, um, we taught workshops together and in 2020, early in 2020, before the pandemic hit, we did the last old time strongman university workshop, um, before the next one, it's coming up this August. It's been that long, um, where Dennis effectively retired and appointed me as the head of the entire operation. So I inherited that from him. I'm very proud of that because there's like almost like a martial arts lineage there, right? Mm -hmm. There's Dennis and then his mentor was Slim the Hammerman, who I knew and was friends with. And these names don't mean anything to anyone who doesn't know old time strongman, but it's important to me, right? Yeah. And then um, prior to that, it was a man named the Mighty Adam. So it's almost like the the lineage of say Napoleon Hill. Um, Earl Nightingale and Bob Proctor, right? Mm -hmm. If you're, if you know those guys, right? So um, th that entire experience taught me the importance and the value of how the mind plays into this, because like the Napoleon Hill quote says, whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve. Well, I've meditated on that phrase for a long time. And I realized that it's not like I've, I've made some changes to it. Let's take the word man out and plug our own name into it, right? Mm -hmm. And then let's take can believe and can achieve out because whatever our thoughts are dwelling on, whatever our imagination is dwelling on is what we're going to achieve. The difference, uh, the, the only distinction is there, what are we being intentional about and what are we just allowing our mind to do? So I, I say it this way, whatever the mind of Dave conceives and believes it achieves. Mm. And that, that can be good or bad, right? So if, if I want to become an expert on binging Netflix shows, I spend two <laughs> hours a day watching Netflix shows. And, you know, in a year I've accumulated, you know, 80 hours worth of that, a hundred hours worth yeah. of that or more, whatever that, what, you know, whatever it is. Um, or I can direct my attention intentionally and create the thoughts, creates the beliefs, create all the stuff in my own mind that is going to drive me in the direction that I want to go. And so that's, that's sort of how it, it came about. And then, like I mentioned earlier, um, when I had a son it, that, that shifted everything, it put a new importance on me. And, and I just dis discovered that there's this term that that floats around out there that I was unfamiliar with, but it made perfect sense when I heard about it, the idea of being what's called a transitional character. And the transitional character is a person who within the course of a single generation, so alters the culture of a family tree that every mm -hmm. generation after is affected by it and that can be good or bad mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um and and i'm like okay this is something i can intentionally apply to myself all of the stuff that my parents tried to overcome and they overcame a lot of it but i still inherited a lot of it because they didn't know what they didn't know i can go back now and systematically look at that and either rewrite it or eliminate it or embrace it depending on on how useful it is to me right and so that's that's become my new mission statement is to be the transitional character and to help others do the same. Yeah, I, I love so much of what you said there. I love just that term transitional character. Um, I also like the fact that um, a lot of a lot of people just become victims of their of their upbringing. Right. They just they just 100%. take it as as this is what it is. This is what I'm destined for. Instead of let's take what's good from from my upbringing right and build on that and then implement new things to become this transition uh, can you say it? transitional character right right um that, that that's super super powerful awesome um yeah. I'm, and and the the other side of that we can take the bad stuff that happened and look at it and say okay what's the opposite of this because mm -hmm. if this sucks the opposite of this is not suck it's good so how can i how can i transform that right yeah very much so. Um, I skipped over this. And I'm kind of glad I did because I like where it falls here. It's the fill in the blank question that I ask mm. um, all the entrepreneurs, because I, I feel like uh, what you said uh, is going to inform this, uh, what you say here quite a bit. So when you hit a brick wall as an entrepreneur, you should blank. Adjust your plan and keep going. Mm. Um, I, uh, I reference Napoleon Hill. I read Napoleon Hill every day. Um, 
there are several authors that I study every day. He's one of them. And paraphrasing Napoleon Hill, he's he says that opportunity often comes disguised in the form of, of temporary defeat or misfortune. Mm -hmm. And when that defeat comes, when that problem comes, when hitting the brick wall comes, it is a signal that something in your plan isn't sound. It has nothing to do with you personally. It's some, it's a symptom of your, of the ineffectiveness of your plan, rebuild the plan, refine the plan, scrap the plan and completely start over with a new plan. But once you do that, set sail again toward the, the goal, toward the objective. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing that I'm, I've, I'm known for saying at the end of all of these uh, podcasts is keep moving forward, right? <laughs> That's one thing you can keep doing, right? No matter what yeah. kind of obstacles you can hit. Um, well, and, and, and to that point, you can move forward sometimes in any direction. Yes. Any yes. direction might yep. take you forward. Yep. That, that's very true. That's very true. Well, awesome. Let's dive into your expertise a little bit. Okay. So um, one of the things that I ask uh, all the entrepreneurs is a secret to question. Um, so your secret to is what is the secret to becoming the role model your kids need, the hero they're looking for, and the dad that they deserve? Um, I've alluded to this, obviously, um, I'm working up to here, but um, it has to do with the mind. It has to do with with breaking and replacing those those unwanted or unuseful generational cycles. And over the course of time that that's been my focus, I've sort of codified it into what I call an internal code. Um, and it's the way the mind works um, <clears throat> there. You know, there's all the different aspects of the mind there's the conscious mind and the subconscious mind the super conscious mind our reasoning our emotions all of that stuff sort of codifies together and forms this internal code um, which is essentially like your operating system right so if you have a computer for example and you press the a key on that computer 100 percent of the time you're going to get an a pop up on the screen right at no point <clears throat> are you going to press that A key and something else happens, no matter what's going on externally, no matter how hard you try to make it be something <laughs> different, the program itself is dictating the outcome. The only way to change that would be to have someone who knows how to program a computer go in and reprogram it so that the A, a key now might be a, a Chinese character, right? Or a Korean character. So Keyboard looks like it's in English, but I start typing in it and it's spitting out, you know, Chinese or Korean now. That's because the program within has changed. My action on the front end hasn't changed, but the program that it travels through changed. Therefore, the outcome changes. If we want to break free from our the parts of our upbringing that don't serve us, that are actually to the detriment of our kids, we absolutely must <clears throat> go in and change that because how many times have we talked to someone and it's not just about parenting i mean that, or about being a dad that's what we're talking about here but you see this in business you see this in health and fitness and weight loss and and getting up earlier and all that and and people will say i know i need to do this thing but why aren't you doing it well i'm working on it well, what does that mean specifically what are you doing well you know i'm just i'm just working on it I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do better. Well, what does that mean? Well, I'm just working on it. So there's no <laughs> actual answer there, right? So what you're telling me when you do that is you're aware that there's something going on. You have an earnest, legitimate desire to change it. <clears throat> you're putting intention into the idea of changing it, but you're not actively taking steps because you don't know what to do or because you're afraid that whatever you do won't work and it'll make the situation worse, right? So um, the way to become that role model, the way to be the, the, the father that they deserve and need, the way to make sure that you're the hero for them um, and it's not some you know, negative influence that you wouldn't want is to become the person that embodies that, that, that models that. And the only way to do that is by changing your, what I call your internal code. There are three different aspects to it that I'm not going to you know, dive deep into right now. But without rewriting that code, it's the same as as hitting the a key and expecting you know the letter r it's the same as setting the the automatic pilot on an airplane and for chicago and trying really hard to fly to la <laughs> yeah you know you can manually override it for a while yeah but the moment that you give out the moment that you're that you're tired and done it will it will redirect back to the original goal <clears throat> and that can't be done primarily through force of will. You cannot just force it, force it, force it. 
because willpower is a finite resource. What you have to do is go in and change the destination in the automatic pilot. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's. And, but, and, and then once and then once you do that, once you like fully absorb that and fully change that within your internal code, you really don't even have to try hard anymore. Right. You hear about people that are they'll say, oh, I try really hard to get up and go to the gym, but it's just hard for me to do. And then there are other people who literally cannot imagine not going to the gym because that's part of their identity. So uh, in order to have a new identity, we have to change that identity. We have to become the person that we want to be fundamentally. Yeah. Yeah, it becomes ingrained in you, right? Uh, it reminds me of um, when I was first starting out as an entrepreneur, that we were in a little entrepreneur hub, and we'd have this conversation just before I was married about the type of women that we wanted to date. And it always comes back to, we have to become the type of men that they would want to date, right? Mm -hmm. um, you, can't just, you can't just date a certain <clears throat> type of woman and, and be a, a, the, the man that she wouldn't want to be, that she wouldn't want to be with, right? So you have to program yourself for lack of a better word, to make those ingrained characteristics in yourself of someone that would appeal to her, right? Well, and 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 you have to be, you have to be legitimate about it. It has to be an honest thing. It can't just be a surface thing, right? right. Yeah. Um, you have to become someone else. And and one of the one of the key indicators on that is, um, the way that we speak to ourselves, right? I how when you make a mistake, how do you respond to your own mistake? Do you? you know, call yourself names and say, I can't believe I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid for doing that. What's wrong with me? Or do you say, Oh, I messed up. What's the solution to this problem? And how quickly can I fix it? Yeah. Right. Yep. And um, I, I like to say that if you knew someone who spoke about you to you, the same way that you speak about yourself to yourself, would that person be on your side? Or would they be against you? Yeah, and it's possible. easy to think about it that way. Like, 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 would you allow another person to speak to you the way that you speak to yourselves? And then to, to bring that back to becoming the, the hero role model dad that your kids deserve, they're going to pick up on that. And the way that, that I speak to myself internally when no one else can hear it, which is expressed in my behavior, and also externally, if I talk, you know, say things about myself out loud, my son's going to pick up on that both through his senses and also energetically. And like one of my favorite things in the world that can happen with him is he'll do something that's challenging to him and he will accomplish it. And he'll say, I'm so proud of myself for doing that. And like, I, I, I can step away at that point because he's becoming self-sufficient. He'll be five in October. He's becoming self-sufficient. And I know that, that a self-esteem or self-image that is rooted in the idea of when I do this, I feel proud of myself, or I know that I can do hard things. That's another, another one that he, that he says sometimes, this is hard, but I can do hard things. I know that, that, that seed being planted is going to last long after I'm dead and gone. Yeah. You've set that kid up for success but when they're already saying they can do hard things, right? That, that is such a powerful thing for, for kids to be able to uh, realize that they can, right? Mm -hmm. It's, that's amazing. So um, I mean, it's less hard. It just means you can do it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. That's right. Um, so in your experience, what are some of the common challenges that dads face um, when attempting to break the generational cycles? Well, we we've we've talked about it a little bit already working from the outside in, you know, the whole trying harder, mm -hmm. which it, if if your plan is sound then yeah, you can, you can try harder, but you have to actually have a plan. So having that lack of clarity and just thinking, okay, you know, I, I get frustrated with my kid too easily, or I, I work too much, you know, that, that was I actually had a guy, um, that I was doing just straight personal development type stuff with goal achievement stuff before I ever had the, before we were, my wife was ever even pregnant. Um, we were checking in on a call one day and I said, um, um, well, how's it going? And he said, well, it's, it sucks. And I'm like, well, what's up? Let's talk through this. And, um, he had, the day before the guy worked a lot um the day before had promised his son he was going to go to a soccer game son was like five years old at the time maybe six <clears throat> he was getting ready to leave the office everything was was in place with that plan and he checked his phone and he got an emergency email and in, and he looked at the at whatever was going on he's like well i can i can bang this out real quick it only take two or three minutes to do and then i can go well 45 minutes later, he realizes he's deep in work mode, problem still not solved. And he's like, oh, crap. So he gets on the phone, calls his son. 
or calls calls his wife says i want to talk to the son puts the son on the phone he says buddy i'm really sorry something came up at work i'm not gonna be able to make it to the game because the game started like two minutes after that right um or they would need to leave or, or i don't remember the specifics of it he said i'm really sorry i'm not going to be able to make it to the game and he was expecting his son to be upset but what in fact happened was the son replied very cheerfully i might add replied oh that's okay daddy you never come to any of my games i'm used to it hands the phone to mom and cheerfully walks off to do whatever he's doing and my guy was just gutted and he says dave not only is this normal to him not only is he just okay with it he was cheerful he's expecting it that's who he thinks i am and i'm like that is rough and he said and i realized my dad used to do that shit and i mm. hated it when i was a kid and now here i am swore i'd never be that guy and i'm that guy and i don't know what to do about it and in many ways that right there was a a, a turning point for me in what i offer as an entrepreneur to go from a more general personal development goal achievement mindset to planting the seed for what i'm doing now for helping dads realize you don't have to be that guy your dad might have been that guy you don't have to be that guy and a lot of them don't want to be that guy but they don't know how to not be that guy and so they just try really hard and work from the outside in and it and and they try to try to apply the hustle and grind mentality that brings some success in an entrepreneurial world to being a parent and the two things don't work that way they just it, it doesn't work no. and so um uh, it it baffles me still to this day how many entrepreneur guys um because the guys that i work with they're entrepreneurial or they're business minded in some aspect and they are also aware of their own health and fitness because coming from a strength and fitness background i'm i you know how's the old saying go that that, that your ideal client is you five or six yep. years ago yeah right um and that's that's very true so i i tend to attract these guys that are business minded but may overwork um or the flip side of that they're business minded and they're concerned that that they're not paying enough attention to it or not paying the right kind of attention to their business because they don't want to be that guy mm -hmm. that's that's not there for their kids and they're you know they're healthy and they're fit but it's baffling to me how many guys i will see or how many guys will post on social media i'll talk to and you know they'll they'll quickly easily without any hesitation drop five or ten thousand dollars on a 90 day or six month fitness thing to achieve a particular goal and they'll spend you know 10 grand setting up a biohacking room with a cold tub and an infrared sauna and all that so that they can be physically optimized, which all that's great, right? Or they'll drop 15, 20, $30,000 on a business mastermind or paying a mentor so that they can have close proximity to, you know, collapse time and accelerate their business. But when it comes to like um, parenting, um, they're like, no, I'm good. I can figure that part out. And I'm like, this is the most important thing. And you're not willing to invest in it because you think that, that you can just figure that out. And there's a, there's a, I don't know if it's, if it's legitimate ignorance. I don't know if it's, if it's, and it's probably some combination or some variation of all these things, like legitimate ignorance, like, no, I'm good. I, I can, I can do that. I don't need to change, you know, or there's, there's ignorance of like, well, I would love to, but this is just who I am. And mm -hmm. this is how I am. And, and I don't think I can change. So, I know from my own experience and from the experience of the guys that I work with, if you want to make those changes, you can do it. There's a mm -hmm. process and it all comes down to changing that internal code. You can't force it from the outside in, um, but you can certainly change the inside and the outside will go to reflect that. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the process or steps that you use to help these people? <clears throat> Sure. Um, the, the process itself in, in rewriting that internal code is pretty simple. It, uh, but that, you know, and as we all know, simple when executed doesn't necessarily mean easy. Right. Mm -hmm, right. Um, you know, it's like, just go lift weights and eat well, and, <laughs> you know, right. Or, or, you know, come up with a, come up, find out a problem that people want solved and get a solution to it. And <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And yes, in, in essence, that's it. But then when the, when the, you know, boots go on the ground, that's, that's a different story, but the, the process itself, there's, there's three parts to it. The very first thing that we have to do is to get clarity. We have to be clear on where we are and we have to be clear on where we want to go because those two things aren't matched up or we're not having the conversation. If they matched up, then, then you don't, 
you're not looking for what I'm offering, right? So we have to get clear on it. And that can be a really, really painful process because particularly with entrepreneurs who are who are able to achieve physical goals because they understand goal setting. They understand daily activities to get there. Um, they understand that in doing that, the identity changes, but they're not sure how to get clarity on what it actually means. They just know what they don't want. Mm -hmm. You know, so many conversations. I'm like, so, so if I could wave the magic wand and you could be the dad that you want to be for your kids, what would that look like? And they'll say, well, I wouldn't work so much and I wouldn't get so frustrated and I, I wouldn't lose my temper and, and I wouldn't do this and I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, okay, that's great. But what would you do? And it's just, it's just a void. They don't know. All they know is the pain they want to escape. They don't know the place that they want to go. So um, if you go to Google Maps and you go to get directions, what's the first thing that it asks you for? Your destination. Your current location. Oh, your current location, right, yes. Right, I, I know the destination. This is where I want to be. Well, what's my current location? I have to get really clear mm -hmm. on where I am before I can give directions because um, where are you geographically? I am in uh, the upstate of South Carolina. So you're in South Carolina. I'm in, I'm in Tennessee. Um, if I'm giving you directions to come to me, they're going to be dr drastically different than if someone's in Seattle or in Texas mm -hmm. or in Maine, right? So we have to know the starting point. You have to get really brutally, honestly clear with where you are and who you are. And you also have to do that in such a way that you don't just beat the hell out of yourself because that's where you are, right? You have to own that without, without allowing it to continue the cycle. Once you do that and you kind of know where you are, now we can start to draw that contrast. Well, if, if I don't want to work all the time, that means I want to work less. But I could also work less and then just go home and sit on the couch and watch TV while my kid plays with his iPad. Have I changed anything or improved anything in the relationship? No. No. So it's not just that I want to work less. It's that I want to be present with my kid more. Okay. But then when I try to hang out with my kid, he's interested in other stuff because I haven't been present. So how do I navigate that? Right. So now it becomes a matter of how do I become the guy who is skilled in matching energy and communicating with the child. And once I have that clarity, it starts to become pretty easy to figure out what to do. Um, and that takes us to the next step after we've got that clarity, which is breaking the old habits, breaking the old beliefs, breaking the old cycles and replacing them with the new. And um, it's a lot like if, um, you know, we were talking about music from the 80s and 90s earlier. It's a lot like if I don't like what CD is being played, I pop out the CD. CDs for you younger people <laughs> are these plastic discs that contained music and information that we used to use back in the old days we'd put them into a computer and sound or images would come out oh, um, but you'd literally have to change the cd you have to change whatever that programming is like i talked about with with keys on the keyboard it's not going to change the output until you change the middle part no matter what the input is and so breaking the old and replacing it with the new is the next step and the cool thing about a computer is you can do that one time and it's done um, the cool thing about humans is we're not computers. That's awesome. <laughs> um, but it's also a drawback in that if we want it to become habitual, we have to do the third step, which is what I call advance. And I get that. Um, I get that word. And I actually call the entire um, project the advancing man project. I get that from uh, Wallace Waddles from the science of getting rich, mm -hmm. and, where he talks about the advancing man. And, and I'm using um, man is the term, but this is, it's about human, right? Um, the advancing man or the advancing person is someone who knows where they want to go. They know that they're capable of doing it. They have a plan to do it. They're continuously moving in that direction and they're doing it in such a way that is to the benefit of everyone around them. And so when we get clarity and then we break and replace those things, now it's a matter of constant refinement, constant practice daily looking at myself objectively and saying, am I being the guy that, that I said I want to be? If I am, great. How can I do it more? If I'm not, great. What can I do differently to be that? And so that's the, that's the overview of the process right there. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and what we've, what we found as, as we've been going through this is very few people are able to do this without having help. 
Mm -hmm. um, it requires having accountability partners. It, the more people involved in it, the the better off it's going to be. That's why the 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 mastermind principle is so incredibly valuable, right? You, Doug, will bring a point of view and a skill set to any given problem that I might be experiencing that I simply don't have. And there'll be overlap, of course, but you can provide insights that I would never think of and vice versa. And so that's that's the importance of not just attempting to do this on your own and trying harder and being so arrogant to think that you can get there by yourself. Um, I didn't develop all this by myself. I sought out help from coaches who knew how the mind worked. And I'm like, this is what I want to do. Can you help me build this? And and we built it. So I ultimately created the resource that I that I wanted and put myself through it. And the results worked. And then I started sharing with other people, which has been a theme of everything that I've ever done. Wow. That, that, I, I love all of that. Um, and I not just the people that you probably helped helped you along the way, but I can just tell by the people that you've mentioned, uh, the books that you've read, that this has been a passion for you. Napoleon Hill, um, um, The Science of Getting Rich, right? Um, all of that. Um, I can tell that this is that this is really passionate for you. Uh, one of the things that you said early on in there that I kind of want to circle back around is when you tell yourself where you don't want what you don't want, right? That's mm -hmm. just reinforcing the negative, right? You just continue. Mm -hmm. if, if that's all you focus on, you're continually reinforcing the negative rather than the positive. Uh, so uh, that's that was a really good point. And I just want to circle back to that for entrepreneurs to make sure that they get that, that you don't want to continue to say what you don't want. You want to say what you want. Absolutely. And and it's it's if we can go woo woo a little bit there and and we yeah. look at there's there's the universal law of polarity, right? Um and uh, the, the question is to to kind of approach this is is it hot? When I walk outside right now, it's hot, sure. Um, but that's not how I mean that. It's like, is it hot? In order for something to be hot, we have to have something to compare it to. Because if I walk outside right now and it's it's a hundred degrees and five thousand percent humidity because we're in Tennessee, then yes, it yeah. seems hot. And in comparison to say the North Pole, it's very hot. In comparison to the surface of the sun, it's quite cold, right? Mm -hmm. So nothing really has a meaning until we're able to, to draw a comparison to it, right? Um, when you say that about complaining and about focusing your attention on something that you don't want, which is the essence of complaining, right? Um, it's it, complaining without coming up with a solution is just complaining. If we If we think about that in terms of just an expression of mental or emotional energy, complaining is the opposite side of the coin or the opposite end of the polarity spectrum of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Complaining is putting a lot of energy into something that I don't like. Gratitude is putting a lot of energy into something that I do like. It's expressing dislike and it's expressing appreciation. It's the same thing just expressed differently, just as hot and cold are both expressions of an, of a, of an energy or phenomenon that we call temperature because temperature just exists. It's a, it's, mm -hmm. it's not until we put it into context that it actually means anything. Um, this energy, whatever you want to call it just exists. And depending on how we direct our attention and our intention with it, we can either complain or be grateful about the same thing. You can be stuck in traffic and complain about how long it's taking you, or you can be stuck in traffic and be grateful that your air conditioner works and that your car is running and that you're going to see your friends or do whatever it is that you're doing. Same activity is going on. It's all in the attitude that's being brought to it. Yeah, I, I think um, a lot of times entrepreneurs will struggle with with the gratitude piece because they're like, they don't really understand the power of it, right? And I think you just really explained the power of it very, very well. So uh, thank you for that. And <laughs> And thank you, Dave, for such a great interview. You've brought a ton of value. I know that uh, you have a place that you'd like for people to go check out uh, what you have to offer. Can you talk about that a little bit? Um, I have a workshop or I'm sorry, it's not a workshop. It's a five day challenge. I, I do these in two different ways. Um, this will be the first five day challenge that I've done. The workshop tends to be three or four hours long, um, but I'm I'm testing this out a different way to to see how I can provide better value for people. I have a five day workshop that's coming up. Um, 
and it's I'm planning to do it later this month. I haven't actually finalized the dates. So if I were well prepared, I would show up and say, go here and register for the workshop. But I don't have that in place yet. So what I'm going to do is give you a place where you can go and get on the email list. And um, within the next few days, the announcement should be going out for the workshop. And that is at advancingmanproject.com slash join. Um, awesome. That'll put you on the list, give you the updates. And if you're at all interested in figuring out who you are and how you can convert who you are into the hero that your kids needs um, and bridging that gap. This is the thing for you. We're going to talk about um, your current state, your current identity, how you're approaching this stuff versus the possibility of where you want to go. I'm going to go in more detail about the, the, the three steps of the process that I described earlier. Um, I've got some, some information about how, uh, there's sort of levels to becoming the the ideal dad that you want to be. And it, it kind of starts with, well, you're a sperm donor and that was your job and, and you were never around anymore. And then there's kind of levels that we progress through all the way up to being the the guy that I aspire to be, the transitional character, right? And um, talk about how all of that applies. You come away from that knowing a lot about how to, to take that and apply it to your own life. And of course, if there's um, interest on your part in wanting to work with me further, then there'll, there'll be details on how we can make that happen as well. But it, it's not just a pitch. There's going to be a lot of valuable information in that. And that's, that's what's coming up soon, but go to advancingmanproject.com slash join to get on the list and get more information about that. Yes. And um, if I could just circle back again to, uh, we could do a lot of things on our own, right? but it's going to take us a lot longer to get to where we want to be. So uh, when, when someone comes along like Dave, that uh, can help you get to where you want to be much faster and probably with less bumps in the road, uh, more than likely more less bumps in the road. Um, you should, you should definitely look into that. So uh, we're going to put that link below in the show notes. If you're listening to this uh, on the podcast, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the description. Um, or if it's just uh, somewhere random, in social media, there will be a link uh, somewhere around this video. So uh, be sure to check out that link. If by chance, um, this today is uh, July 31st, 2023. Correct. If you're watching this in the future, um, there should be something there uh, from that link that, that the workshop's probably already in place. And uh, that link, where however you signed up, will still direct you probably to, yes. um, to that workshop or, or whatever it is. So um, awesome, awesome, Dave. I'd like to close these interviews out with some words of wisdom from you to the entrepreneurs like what can you pass along to the entrepreneurs um that are listening um since we've been talking so much about becoming that that role model dad and that transitional character i want to throw some some ideas out there some 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 truths that i've encountered about how we relate to our kids um everything starts with us we need to be in a good place to be able to connect with our kids and that's, that means in all aspects of our life, physically, in our business, mentally and emotionally, we need to be in a good place to do that. Um, our job as fathers is not to control our children, but to control ourselves. Um, the big one is that kids are going to learn more from the behavior that we model than they will from what we try to teach them. Do as I say, not as I do, does not, has not, and never will work. Um, it's not our child's responsibility to make us happy. It's ours. We have to find our own happiness. Um, the stronger our connection is with the kid, the more influence we're going to have. And when kids are acting in a way that we don't like, if they're acting in a challenging way, it means they need their help. And when they're seeking attention, they are seeking connection. That connection is something that we can provide for them, Pro especially if we respond to their behavior with kindness and curiosity and the intention to understand them. And the only way to do that is to understand our own feelings, our own behavior by getting clear on who we are and and who we want to be and how we want to show up for our kids. Um, they're not trying to make us mad. They're not trying to test us. They're not trying to get us upset. They are doing the best that they know how to do to regulate these big emotions with these tiny bodies. Um, and in order for us to make that connection, if we go into it, understanding that we wind up with the, the fundamental principle that I distilled everything down to when I was coming up with it is the idea of the law of increase or the impression of increase that Wallace Waddles talks about applied to fatherhood is in every single interaction that I have with my child, regardless of the environment, regardless of the location, regardless of the time of day, every single opportunity 
Every single interaction I have with him is an opportunity for me to leave him better off in some way than he was before that interaction. And that can be a big deal, huge life lesson stuff, or it can be just a small thing where he understands that, yes, daddy loves me. Um, that is my guiding principle. And all of the stuff that I said leading into that is summarized in that. If I can leave him better off with every single interaction that I have with him, then I'm doing a good job. Wow, that is that is super powerful. I, I hope everybody's listening to that. If not, if you're watching this, go rewind that and listen to that part again because uh, you want to be a, a better parent. Um, it's it's summed up right in that in that little sentence. So um, thank awesome, you, awesome. Thank you, Dave. And until next time, entrepreneurs, keep moving forward. <laughs>